All right. So welcome, everybody, to today's episode. My name is Nathaniel Saad. I'm a writer for Youth in Politics. And our guest for today is Sir John Vincent Cable, who is the former leader of the Liberal Democrats, the former Secretary of State for Business, Innovation and Skills, and the former Member of Parliament for Twickenham. Sir, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm uh, suitably locked down in a nice rural retreat at the moment. Yeah, that sounds uh, like a similar situation for us all, um, especially during these days. Um, and incidentally, it ties in directly with what are what we're going to be talking about today. So let's dive right in. Yeah. Um, in today's world, we're all under the impacts of the COVID nineteen virus, and as such, we wanted to know um, what are some of the main impacts that this virus is having on the United Kingdom's economy, and how is the government trying to respond to them? Well, uh, the UK. Uh, as a result of, I think, a combination of mismanagement and bad luck, has found itself probably the worst affected uh, country in Europe. Um, the government prevaricated for a couple of weeks before introducing the lockdown. As a result, uh, there were large numbers of um, unnecessary excess deaths. And the government has been, therefore, very... Um, hesitant about introducing the release from lockdown is now going into that process in order to save the economy. But a lot of damage has already been done. Um, we know that certainly within the last quarter, uh, the British economy declined by something like 30 percent. Uh, probably on an annualized basis, it will be 12 percent over the year, uh, one of the worst of the industrial countries. Um, that being said, do you think that um, the effects of COVID-19 will um, essentially impede the process or the negotiation process of the new free trade agreement following Brexit? There are many um, that are falling ill and policymakers themselves are focused on fighting the virus. So do you believe that the transition period should be extended to accommodate with the difficulties? Well, absolutely essential. Uh, the problem is that the government is in serious political trouble. Um, it's widely held by the British public to have mismanaged the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, it has lost a lot of credibility as a result of the Prime Minister trying to defend one of his advisers who broke the lockdown rules. Uh, and as a result, he's having to fall back on the support of its um, base and its base is um, for Brexit, if not very much else. So the government has to deliver uh, a Brexit uh, and this promised free trade agreement. The problem on the other side is that the European Union doesn't regard this as top priority. It's got other concerns um, with this massive economic depression and the stresses within the European Union. So the European heads of government are not directly engaged. Uh, trying to get 27 of them into the same place is not easy. Um, they're not meeting face to face. So they have quite good reasons for wanting to postpone uh, coming to a conclusion on the agreement. Uh, this doesn't suit the British government, which wants an early agreement to be able to demonstrate to its supporters that it has come out of Brexit properly. So we're now heading for a, um, a serious car crash uh, that there is unlikely to be an agreement within the next month. Um, if that happens, we're unlikely to get an agreement within the next uh, within this year because that was the timetable. And a lot of British industries are already beginning to say that on top of the COVID pandemic disaster, they're now faced with um, an exit from from the Brexit arrangements without a proper agreement in place. You may have heard that um, Nissan, the leading car company, said its position wasn't sustainable if that happened. Mm -hmm. um, to further go into this point, um, if there is an extension or rather a delay in the whole Brexit process, do you think that this could roll over into the distribution or trade of a potential vaccine for the COVID-19 virus? Would this have any effect on that distribution? Well, the problem with getting a postponement, it, it has to be agreed by both sides. The European Union clearly wants a postponement. There are many people in the UK who want a postponement, but the government doesn't want a postponement. 
it would be a terrible loss of face uh, with its own Brexit supporters if it had to back down on the timetable. So we're, we're in a very dangerous position at the moment where we, we may finish up crashing out at the end of the year without an agreement uh, because of the, um, the political priorities of the British government. But certainly from the EU point of view, a postponement would be totally, totally desirable and eminently sensible. And I happen to agree with them on this point. All righty. Thank you. Um, moving on from the topic of Brexit, um, in terms of the industries in the United Kingdom that are suffering the most, um, do you think that there would be an easy recovery, uh, regardless of the Brexit situation? Do you think that the economy would be able to bounce back quickly after the pandemic is finished? The simple answer is no, uh, and that's despite the fact that the government has actually been pretty sensible on the response to the pandemic economically. It brought in a fairly generous scheme for paying the wages, uh, 80% of the wages, of workers who hadn't had anything to do but were still on the payroll of companies, a kind of wage subsidy. Uh, it also has provided an extensive loan facility for uh, companies that are struggling who, who lack liquidity at the present time. So they've they've pursued you know sensible economic policies, but uh, the problem is the 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 shock to the UK it, and not just the UK, but this is um, true of many other countries is so profound that I just can't see an early recovery. We've got a complete failure of demand. Uh, customers are um, not able to shop on the normal basis. They're uh, worrying about the future, reluctant to spend. We've got a collapse of employment, probably something of the order of 10 to 15% unemployment. Um, no, it doesn't look good. Businesses are not investing. Uh, and the rest of the world is also in recession. So Britain is is being dragged down with everything else. It's quite unlike 2008-9, where there was a coordination between the main economies, including China, uh, to keep the world economy going. Now we're all going into recession together. So no, the answer to your question is no, there isn't going to be um, a quick recovery. So just to follow up on that, as you mentioned, there was more cooperation in past years um, in terms of on the international scale. Do you see a specific reason for why that isn't necessarily happening now? And do you think that this would be a better solution to help the United Kingdom if there was more cooperation internationally? Uh, of course. And, and actually, 10 years ago, it was the British government which uh, under Gordon Brown, which led the process of trying to get um, cooperation between the main countries. Why isn't this happening now? Well, several reasons. Uh, first of all, President Trump in the United States has no interest in global economic cooperation or any other kind of cooperation. Uh, the Chinese are getting into, uh, partly because of a reaction to Trump, getting into a very belligerent, nationalistic uh, way of thinking also. Uh, so you're left with um, smaller um, countries, uh, you know, middle-sized countries, Britain, Germany, France, um, which have got their separate quarrel about Brexit. Um, you know, Canada, Italy, uh, Japan, I'm sure they would like to cooperate. But without the United States... And China, it's impossible to see how you could get an effective global response at the moment. Indeed. Um, and finally, just before we uh, wrap things up, there are many experts such as uh, James Smith of ING Economics who noted that scientists are predicting potential repeats of the outbreak of the virus even after the lockdown is lifted. Um, at the rate that the UK is going right now, do you think that the country would be prepared for a comeback of the virus in potentially a year or two? Uh, well, we're not prepared for it, and it would be disastrous if it happened. Uh, I, th I think I'll qualify that answer because we're bound to get some repeat. Um, the, the lifting of the lockdown, lifting it quite rapidly, which is what's happening uh, in Britain and other countries, is bound to result in an increase in infections. 
Um, so the question then is whether it takes us back to where we were before or whether we can live with a temporary, relatively small increase. Um, I suppose the worst outcome is we get a um, an L-shaped recovery. We just don't recover because uh, it isn't possible to get the economy going without triggering a uh, uh, deepening pandemic. Uh, most economists, I think, now think that we're going to get a sort of W-type recovery. We get some recovery taking place, then we get a, a setback because um, of an increase in uh, infections, uh, a slowdown, and then uh, another revival, uh, a, a rather messy, phased, uh, interrupted recovery is probably the most plausible outcome. I don't think the government had any choice or other governments had any choice but to lift the lockdown. Uh, in Britain's case, uh, it may have come prematurely. I think in many other countries, it's it's been more carefully and properly phased, certainly France, uh, Germany, uh, Japan, I think in Canada, from what I've heard of it, um, they seem to be going about this in a more careful and sensible and measured way. Well, thank you, sir. Um, let's hope that the second setback is uh, is short and doesn't take too long. Um, and that concludes today's episode. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join us and discuss these issues. No, thank you. It's good to speak to you. Good to speak to you as well, sir. Alrighty. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Take care and stay Bye. safe.